Hello and welcome to day three at Expolingua Online. I am Ekaterina from Expolingua team and I'm happy to welcome six wonderful content creators today. Maria from Espanol con Maria, Alexa from Learn French with Alexa, Lucrezia from Learn Italian with Lucrezia, Jim and Mai from Spanish and Go and Pierre from Hola Amigo. Hola, bonjour and bienvenuti. Hey. Let us start from an introduction round. Can you tell us where you are originally from, where you are based now, the names of your channels and what you teach there, very briefly. Okay, I'll start. <laughs> um, my name is Lucrezia, I'm from Rome and I'm now based in Rome as well. Um, I teach Italian on YouTube and my channel is called Learn Italian with Lucrezia. Well, I'm, I'm going to go next then. Uh, my name is Alexa and I'm French. Um, though I don't live in France anymore, I live in England, in um, London, and I have a channel called Learn French with Alexa. It's our turn. <laughs> we are Jim and Hi, um, I am from Mexico, from Colima. It's a small little state on the Pacific side of the country. Jaime, or Jim, is from Minnesota. And together we have Spanish and Go, where we teach Spanish for people who want to travel to Spanish-speaking countries. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, so hey, I'm Pierre, I'm from France. I currently live in France as well. And I have a YouTube channel where I help uh, French people to learn Spanish language. So that, that's it for me. And I am Maria. I'm from Bucaramanga, Colombia, a town in the mountains. But now I live in Santa Marta in front of the beach in the Caribbean, the Colombian Caribbean. And my YouTube channel is Español con Maria. And I teach Spanish in a tropical way. Very nice, thank you. Great. Uh, we are also curious to hear the history of your channels. When and how did you start them? How did you get this idea? And uh, what were you doing in the beginning? I guess it was not your main job uh, from the day one, or correct me if I'm wrong. And then tell us what has changed by now or recently. Is your channel now your main and only profession? And what is your success story? Let's start with uh, Maria. Okay, uh, I started Español con Maria four years and a half from now. Uh, and it became my main job last year. Wow. But it's not my only job <laughs> and even now. Um, I created Español con Maria because I love languages. And I lived one year in Brazil and I made all the mistakes you can ever imagine while I speak Portuguese, even though I thought I speak Portuguese, I even also asked for a really bad thing in a bar. And I was asking for, in my mind, I was thinking I was asking for an ice cream. But people was like, oh my God, girl, what are you asking for? And after that, I think that people, okay, people realized that I, that I wasn't meaning that because I have my Latin accent, my Spanish accent. But I realized that there are so many things people don't know, doesn't know about the language. And we as native speakers can help them to get a better immersion in, 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 their, in the countries that that language is, speak, is spoken. So I wanted to help people who want to live or travel in a Spanish speaking country uh, teaching them Spanish in a fun way because when I start Español con Maria, most of the information online about the Spanish language was, was very academic and was kind of um, so organ like so organized and not tropical and Spanish speaking countries are mostly tropical and you cannot see that essence in the in the main 
in the main content that was online by that time. So I wanted to make a different experience for the people who want to learn Spanish online. Great, and it worked out. Yes. Okay, Pierre, what is your success story? Okay, so like I started the blog six years ago because I wanted so much to travel to Latin America. It was like a child dream. And then I could do it because I did an internship in Costa Rica at the French embassy. So it all started there because I started to write a few articles just about sharing my experience. And then, you know, I started to make some videos as well. And the uh, YouTube channel started to grow. And but it, it needed uh, a lot of time, like two, three years. I even gave up at the point. Oh. And then I saw the numbers increasing, number of views, likes and everything. So I was like, okay, maybe I could get back to work because it, it looks like I can make something out of it. So uh, then I... Uh, I started like leaving uh, out of the channel two years ago and I didn't even really have a job before because I started it as a student. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of gave up my studies at the final year of my university and then I just went full on uh, on the projects and yeah, like it's been two, three years, I can only live with this uh, before I was living at my parents' home, so trying to save money uh, to make it. And uh, now it's very different because, you know, you have like a company, even though you're alone. So that's pretty weird because you're a YouTuber, but you have a company at the same time. And yeah, I love to share my, my, my passion to French people and most of all, the Spanish language diversity. So to me, that's the main thing. Uh, the language is so diverse. People are so diverse. There are so many more than, you know, 22, 23 <laughs> Spanish-speaking countries in the world. So mm -hmm. that's, that's why I keep, I, keep, I keep doing this. I love, I love the exploration of all of this. Great. Nice story. So Maya and I met in 2010. I was a recording studio engineer. So I owned a recording studio in my hometown, recording bands. My specialty was audio and video. Prior to that, I was in bands and I'd interned for a company that allowed me to travel to different parts of the United States with national touring acts. And so that's where I was inspired to travel. <clears throat> I decided to learn Spanish about back in 2010 when I met Mai on a language learning platform and we were just practicing with each other. She wanted to improve her English. I wanted to learn Spanish. I was still pretty new back then. But eventually, after about six months of chatting online, Mai invited me down to Mexico. I had never been to Mexico before and we really hit it off. We were just friends prior, just like pen pals, practicing each other's languages. But when we met in, in person, we fell in love. We started traveling around Mexico. And I was really just fascinated by the Spanish language and the differences in culture. And we thought, wouldn't it be great if we could combine our passions? I've always been a teacher. And... I've always been, you know, this recording engineer, basically, who knows kind of the, the behind the scenes stuff for running mm -hmm. things like YouTube and a podcast. So we decided, how about we start with uh, the podcast, which we didn't release, but we were following these other blogs and people who were making money online. And we thought, well, I think we could do this too, right? So if all of these other people we followed were able to do it, these adventure blogs, these travel blogs that uh, we would be able to do it too. So we decided, how about we kick off a YouTube channel? And there we started showcasing different real world situations where you could um, actually use 
the lesson material to get around and travel to different Spanish speaking countries. And now our goal is to visit every Spanish speaking country. We have the YouTube channel, we have a podcast, we run Spanish immersion retreats in Mexico. We just finished up a couple last month where we brought 18 people down to Mexico in two different groups. We had like a beginner intermediate and intermediate advanced um, in two separate groups to basically do what uh, meeting Maya has done for me is to show them the culture and teach them about the language and inspire them to get out and travel more. Wonderful. It sounds really great that languages brought you together. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Alexa, would you like to take over? Um, yeah, um, and I realized one thing is that I'm way older than any of you, <laughs> so, so which means that my story starts back in 1992, and you were not born a vet, but um, it's, um, we, I've always owned a business uh, teaching French in primary school since 1995, um, and so uh, very slowly we became very popular in London. Um, uh, teaching French within primary schools. Uh, so I had a fleet of lots of teachers uh, working for me. Um, subsequent to that, uh, things starting to go wrong in terms of the government not paying teachers outside schools, you know, um, uh, anymore. So we had to find a way uh, to change the business. And in uh, 10, 10, 12 years ago, we were the first ones to podcast. And so the Learn French with Alexa podcast, you know, um, started. And uh, we uh, became quite popular because it was new. It was new. Uh, and uh, nobody was doing what we were doing. At the same time, we were still having this company teaching French in primary schools. And uh, there was this new thing called YouTube. So we uh, decided to start filming the first podcast on YouTube and uh, one of the first videos you see is is that it's me in a booth filming my podcast um, and then the YouTube channel became very popular uh, very very quickly you know we grew and we grew and um, we started developing a business out of that because you know we had a business before and uh, we we had to change, we had to change and technology changed, you know, you, you guys, maybe you, you were born in it and, uh, but we had to adapt, you know, from a company that did not use technology as a business, we, we had to adapt into teaching online. So we were the very, well, we, we learned how to use, uh, learn French with Alexa, for example, we were the first ones to, you know, use this learn French with. Um, and subsequently, we bought learnfrench.com as well. Um, we have a, a team that is quite big now um, of uh, selling um, courses. So we're using our notoriety on YouTube um, to sell our course. Uh, and I have content creators that help me do that. We've just come out with a new uh, TUF, TEF, you know, exam preparation course. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that's what we do. So starting from just be being teachers in primary schools, we are now uh, content creators for YouTube and for the website. Uh, but I'm still at the front of it, if you wish, uh, but I'm hoping that a young face will replace me at some point, uh, you know, and uh, would become the next Alexa for me and for my channel. And uh, because I have to leave it for newer, you know, people to do it. Um, but what we have created is quite something, knowing that we knew nothing about technology 15 odd years ago. So that, that's us, that's a different story. <laughs> But I hope you can stay the face of your company and of your of your channel. I will, I will. But I am very aware that you know that YouTube is a, a young people's business and Insta is a young people's business. You know, and I always, you know, if you follow me on Insta, it's always based on my age. And you know, it's so funny, it's so funny that people still follow me. To be honest, not proving the um, opposite. <laughs> But um, but no, it's uh, we we were lucky enough to be early 
I think, in, in that business. And that's why we, I mean, I have become quite known out there in the world of education, or we are called edutubers in the world of uh, and YouTube, you know. And so, yes, I'm, I'm hoping that I can do a few years of that, you know, but eventually I'll retire. So. I hope not in the near future. <laughs> Thank it's you. Okay. It's a very inspiring story. Yeah. yeah. Okay. My turn. Yeah. <laughs> Your turn. So, <clears throat> um, I started my channel nine years ago um, when I was studying at university, and at the time I was studying translation, and um, I thought, why don't I make videos for people who want to learn Italian, because at the time I've always been a very avid YouTube cons video consumer. So I've always liked the idea um, to create video content and all the videos about Italian language I could find were either full of like grammar mistakes or they were based on like stereotypes the very basic stereotypes you can think of about Italy and Italians. So something clicked in my mind because I wanted to change that. Like I didn't want people who, who didn't know Italians or Italy to think about us that way. So I just started out and, and in the beginning it was a hobby and it stayed a hobby until four years ago. And four years ago, the channel became my full-time job. So it's been a long time. <laughs> um, next year, uh, we're going to celebrate 10 years on YouTube. But I mean, uh, the channel is growing. Um, it's, it's not um, gone viral or anything, but it's just grown over time steadily. I'm happy about that. Um, and I'm here today. <laughs> So very happy to be teaching Italian on YouTube. Yeah, we are happy to have you also today here. <laughs> um, so you brought me to one professional question. How do you organize your work? Are there any special working hours you set for yourself? And do you have assistance or anyone helping you with the channel uh, and websites? Or do you do everything on your own? And so what are your daily tasks uh, like? Maybe we can start with Jim and Mai. Oof, I think that's, <laughs> that's one of the biggest struggles with content creators. Um, it feels like there's always um, something, right? Like you go to bed and you have this huge list of all the things you couldn't do. Um, but it's about a balance, I think that we were always trying to balance for us is travel and, and the content creation. It's, um, it's a big um, task to balance everything, but we have now three people who are helping us because we just got to a point where we realized we couldn't keep producing a podcast and the membership material that goes with that. And then the YouTube channel with the videos. And then we have Sometimes we have to translate things. Um, we have the, um, the immersion retreats. We have another person helping us with that. So yeah, we have four people. Not everyone is um, all the time, like full time. But yeah, we, we just couldn't keep doing it ourselves. And it's been um, a growing experience for us, learning how to delegate things to other people, learning how to manage a team. It takes a lot of um, time. We have had other people helping us in the past and you need to learn how to um, see when someone works with the team or not. So we, I don't know, it's been uh, a learning experience um, because I don't, I don't like telling people what to do, but when you have a business, you kind of have to, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been fun. It's been enriching for us. I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that. Yeah, I don't necessarily like telling people what to do, but I certainly like 
having more time back, right? Because if you're a content creator, you can just be at it 24 seven and it can get to be a lot when you're always on your phone or always on your computer or always in front of a camera or always in front of a microphone. So the more you can kind of delegate things, it definitely uh, makes for an, a more enriching experience because when we are on and either helping people during a retreat or recording a podcast, we can be fully there and fully commit to that and not be too burnt out from the process. Right. I think that your colleagues now will agree with you, but maybe they have to add something, or maybe we have other stories where people doing everything on their own. Um, Alexa, what do you say? Well, I just want for, for Jim and, and May, I think the, because I'm a, a businesswoman uh, as such more than I am a YouTuber, I'm a YouTuber, but originally a businesswoman, I think that it's good that you're putting your eggs in different baskets. Uh, you know, you have the retreat and that sounds amazing. Um, and, and you've got the YouTube channel that generates incomes as well. And so having uh, incomes generated from different sources is the key uh, to success of a business, uh, especially this kind of business. You can't rely solely on one platform uh, to, to, to make money, you know, uh, as, as a business. And for, for us, we have a team that work on different projects at the same time. Um, so we, we have content creators that create for the channel and they do my scripts as well for, for the channel, you know, but they also do the content from my website and the course uh, that we are selling as well. You know, it's important to use them in the best way possible. And you did say that you don't know You, you, you don't know how to tell people what to do, you know, or you, you're fearful of, but this is, this is um, a question of uh, practice, I think, and experience, and it will come because uh, otherwise it's a waste of time for you. Um, it's a way you micromanage and you can't micromanage, you know, you have to hire the perfect person for your business and don't hire friends. That's, that's all I have to say, <laughs> just <laughs> because ultimately there will be a problem, you know, and you won't know how to, you know, say stop, I can't, I'm going nowhere with you. So um, by experience, I know that uh, when you hire someone, um, I'm not sure whether it's relevant in this conversation, but um, Uh, make sure that you have a very clear layout of their duties before even starting to search. What is it that you are after? You know, and that's half of the battle because you might have a one liner where well, we are looking for a content creator. You will have 200 applicants and maybe only one is suitable. And if you had written your Uh, you know, your job application better and more targeted, you will have only five applicants, but you know, they are the quality and they know that, you know, you know that they are exactly what it is that you're looking for. So it makes things much easier in terms of time, you know, uh, keeping, <laughs> I don't know, for us at Learn French with Alexa, it's all targets and time and outcomes. And, you know, we, we have an objective at the beginning of the year and we have one you know for the end of the year and we need to achieve that uh, as well as we can with the best people that we can have if that makes sense anyway that's my little thing thank you thank you for sharing the experience i think it's insightful for everyone here in the round pierre do you want to say uh yeah uh, I, i think what's uh, pretty interesting with the For, for example, when you're a content creator, in that it's your identity as well. It's not like a simple company. So sometimes to me, it was very difficult to say, okay, let's grow the business, but you need to keep this identity because it's, you know, this handmade touch, the craftsman touch you have as a YouTuber. Sometimes it's not perfect, but maybe that's why People love the content as well. And that's why people love this type of content instead of just buying an assimil method, you know? So yeah, to me, it was, it was very difficult. I, I found I, I, I could like, you know, hire like-minded people and it helped a lot. For example, if you say, okay, I like when it's 
when things are a bit funny, some jokes and everything, if you hire people who are into the same things uh, as you, for example, an editor who can put memes or, you know, whatever, uh, it's way easier because I found I could keep the all amigo identity even with other people if they are like minded and if they know what are the core values and why and what if the all amigo at the beginning if they understand well this i think it can it can work but yeah i work for example now i, I work with an editor video editor and with few uh, native Spanish teachers to have uh, this native uh, side because it's very difficult as a non-native some, sometimes to sound, to sound perfectly natural, you know. So I think it's good to have this back and forth with those teachers so we can bring the most to students. For example, in the programs, uh, I think it's better for them to listen to real native speakers. So I try to to mix my voice, my voice and other voices in the dialogues with people from Argentina, Colombia, uh, you know, from many different Spanish speaking countries. So yeah, I, I think to me, the, the big dilemma, what the thing is that people follow you for some reasons, is sometimes you think if I grow too much, I will just be this big company with no, you know, not human. Let's say, I think that the difficulty of our business. Uh, I would like to say that as content creators, we just can't focus on creating content. We also need to distribute the content. And even more at the beginning, we can create amazing pieces of content and nobody will say it because we don't have um, an audience already created. And something that had helped me a lot is receiving the help from fans that I'd, by the mm -hmm. time became being uh, clients, but they helped me a lot to distribute the content. They shared with me different Facebook groups that I can join to share and post things. They also helped me translating the, the video subtitles. So something I really love about this age of social media is that actually we create content and we share it, but it's not the the relationship doesn't stop when we post. The relationship is always uh, I don't know the word in English to say this, but it's always recreating and um and and growing. And people who is actually behind the screen is also being part of the story, and they really make a big difference. And they are really an incredible help for us as content creators. And it's it, it might sound funny, but something that helped me a lot to grow was, I, I call it my Club de Tias, my aunt's club. Every eh, mom, mom friend, um, my, my, my uncles and my, and my aunts share everything everything I post. I mean, I, I was like, why do they share that? They, they don't have friends who that want to speak Spanish, but it helps a lot because it, I don't know how it's like magic, but feeling all that support and also knowing that support a lot to distribute the content, it's, it's a great tool. Okay, Sen, what about you? Do you have a team or do you do everything on your own? Um, <laughs> I sometimes pray. Pre, um, pay the price for it but I run my channel on my own mm. uh, but I've uh, I finally found an editor to help me out with video editing um, because I'm very picky and I'm probably very afraid to let go of some things and I'm very much um, I agree with what Pierre was saying that there's a very important part that the identity of the YouTuber plays in the channel. And I'm afraid that if I um, let go of certain things, that identity will go away with that, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah. Well, can I just ask, can I ask a question? 
Sure. Yeah. Yes. Um, to Lucretia, what are you afraid of? Uh, I don't even know. It's just in my mind. It's everything. Um, it's very hard to explain right now, but uh, maybe I'm afraid that the audience that has been with me for the last nine years will not recognize me anymore. Yeah, but you, you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily let that happen, would you? No. Um, if, if you had a team, you would make sure that the team understand mm -hmm. your core values and you would make sure that actually you are who you are and your team makes you look good. You know, the, you are ultimately the, the face of your channel. So um, you, you wouldn't change if you had the right team and the right editor the as well. Right. Having the right editor like Pierre found an editor that fitted his personality, you know, and that's very important. You know, I mean, our editor don't need to be all quirky and because it's very much, you know, the, the teachy type of thing. But I understand how finding the right editor that understands who you are, you know, uh, will reflect in his editing. So it's mm -hmm. it's important. And you feel if you feel that you found the right editor, uh, you know, Finally, to portray yeah. you the the way you want to be portrayed, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mustn't be scared to say, "I don't like it." You know, I've have had the discussion like that on one of the videos tonight, and I said, "No, no, that's not happening." You know, so it's you know. Being very certain, I don't think, Lucretia, yeah. that you can ever be worried about losing who you are in your mm -hmm. channel. I just have to get used to it. Yes, no, absolutely, absolutely. And the bigger you are going to be, and you know, you, you, the fact that you're growing is still showing that you're doing a good job. You know, to me, I think that's mm -hmm. important. Yeah. Well, thank you for your advice. <laughs> I think when you're a YouTuber, we often start off as artists, not business owners, right? We're basically teaching people through video. And so we turn on the video and we want total control because artists generally don't delegate aspects of the painting that they're painting, right? Well, YouTube video is a piece of art in a way, at least to us. I think probably each of us can relate in some way that when we finish a video, it feels like it's a little piece of ourselves that we're putting out there. And so when you come at it from, from that angle, I think it's similar to when I was running my recording studio, you have a lot of pride in every element that goes into that piece. And to delegate part of it feels like some sort of uh, rule that you're breaking or an abomination that you're handing off this piece of yourself to somebody else. But I think as Alexa was saying, you can find the right people and you're probably not going to find the right person right away. And that can be painful. But when you reach out and try a few people and find people who are uh, interested in supporting you and creating the, the type of work that you want to create, it can definitely take a huge load off so that you can help even more people. Because in some ways, it's a bit selfish of us. And I've been there for every video we do. I want to tweak every little thing. But we also have to understand as content creators, the more we spend on a piece of, of content, the fewer people we're able to help because that means we're not able to move on to the next video and put more, more useful content out there to help people, right? We can spend hours and hours and hours on one thing, but if we don't delegate to be able to produce more, we're sort of doing our audience a disservice because we might be able to help them more if we're able to find different ways to delegate pieces uh, to, to speed up the process and to ultimately. Yeah, thank you everyone for friendly and valuable mutual coaching <laughs> that we are in this exchange. I think it's helpful to everyone who is here. And um, Pierre, you said, um, this leads me to the next question. You said that people are following your channel for a reason or for a number of reasons. Maybe we'll make a quick fire and everyone think of a reason or reasons why you think people are following your channel. Let's start with Pierre. <laughs> well, so I would say to learn Spanish, you know, so that's a very basic answer. But um, maybe I think I found out that with the comments and the emails, 
that it's a lot about identification. Mm -hmm. So I recognize a lot of people like me, uh, like young French people, students, for example, who are like, okay, I'm a bit bored by with the studies. I'm not sure I want to do this. And I'm sure one thing is that I really want to learn Spanish and I uh, enjoy the process of learning. So I think it's uh, the identification as well uh, uh, with the story as well uh, and the process of learning. So that's. Mm -hmm. Maria? Okay, uh, first also because people want to learn Spanish, but also I found a very specific niche of people who doesn't live in a Spanish speaking country, but feel very linked to Spanish speaking culture. For example, I have found many students that live, I don't know, in Belgium, in Germany, and they feel they are Latins, but they don't even have, they don't even, have been in Latin America, but somehow they feel connected, they feel linked with, with Latin American culture. So they just try to find every time content, music, books, everything that makes them feel they're in Latin America. So that's my specific niche. People who want to speak Spanish, but also want to feel and breathe and listen and everything about Latin America. All right, uh, Jim and Mai. People follow us because we help them connect with the culture of a place through languages and through travel. So our niche is also very specific to people who want to maybe in the future move to a Spanish speaking country, who want to understand more about the, the culture of these places and who are also interested in maybe just traveling for vacation. They want to get to know the culture of a place through their, I don't know, in their two week period, they have every year of vacation. So we help them do that. And then with also with the podcast, they can listen to us all the time and they can practice and they can get um, travel tips. Um, they can get cultural aspects of the language and in preparation for when they are ready to travel or to move to a Spanish speaking country. So we always say that we help people connect with, with the culture of a place through language and travel. And we've noticed depending on where we're living and the content that we're putting out, we attract more people who are interested in that location, obviously. So we were living in Puerto Rico for three years and we produced lots of content there. And so we got a lot of people reaching out saying, hey, I'm thinking about moving to Puerto Rico. I'm thinking about retiring there. I found it really useful to hear what it's like for you guys living there and some of the things and tools you use to navigate the culture and to be able to understand how to get things done in, in that specific place. And likewise for Mexico, when we're in Mexico, we attract more people who are interested in coming here. So ultimately we hope to have some resources for everybody for all Spanish speaking countries. It's a lofty goal, but it's something we plan to take on now that Mai's a citizen. We've been going through the process for years now and we've been um, kind of stuck in the United States, but now we're, we're free to go off and, and help create content for people who are interested in visiting other Spanish speaking countries. Yeah, great. And Lucrezia. I would say people follow me um, because obviously they want to learn Italian um, and I try to give informal but effective and clear grammar explanations and from the comments I see that they're very much appreciated and I also blog a lot mm -hmm. and many students are interested in what is life like um, here in Rome and also other parts of Italy um, that are far like um, they want to see life that is far from stereotypes or mm -hmm. what you normally see uh, on uh, media mm -hmm. right 
And Alexa, I already see one answer from one of your subscribers in the, in the chat uh, who follows you because of your professionalism, but maybe you also, what's your point of... Uh, what, um, what... I think um, we are followed uh, for two reasons. Um, a, the uh, content, um, the quality of content um, that we produce um, it's, uh, you know, when Lucretia said, you know, when, when there is a grammar that is wrong and you see it and it, you cringe, you know, you think, oh, yeah. so we, we are known for accuracy and we are known for being able to transfer grammar uh, as effectively and easily as we can. Uh, you know, it's sometimes a bit boring, you know, but ultimately I make it look as easy as I can you know, uh, be. So I, uh, it's, it's just pure teaching French, you know, and, and though we are learning with the channel and, you know, to, to change a bit the topics and we try and sometimes people don't like it. You can see in the drop in views, you think, no, that's not what you do, Alexa. That's not what you do. I do not like that. And they make you, and they tell you, you know, I did a short, uh, not a short, yeah, it's called a shorts now. I wore a wig. Uh, blue week the other day mm. and someone was really unhappy <laughs> because that's not what I do you know it was it was very funny you think well that he, he actually spent time writing a really long message and comment about how I should not be wearing a wig and how you know I should be uh, because I'm 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 watched by scholars I'm watching universities I'm watching schools you know and and I should really have this image, you know, all the time. And you think, okay, we teach French, but we teach French in a the not funny way, but in a fun way and approachable. And, and I'm assuming this is how you, uh, Lucretia, teaches, you know, I'm so sorry, I haven't had time to look at your, uh, but I will now look at everybody's channel for sure, uh, because it interests me a lot. So yeah, it's just, I suppose, the personality and the, the, the quality of content. I think that's why we are watched. Mm -hmm. What I also noticed is uh, this uh, new aspect of sharing something from the private life or sharing the uh, real life, the, yes. uh, the things which you as uh, content creators do, not just for language teaching or for traveling or for selling your product, but also what you're doing uh, in your normal life behind the scenes. I think it's also... Busy. Yeah, so, so um, in fact, Add to that, I'm so sorry, in terms of sharing a uh, private life, I find that Instagram is perfect for that. So we're buying on YouTube, we are the serious, you know, teachers of French, well, I'm the only face on, on Learn French with Alexa, but on Instagram, we have more leeways and we show an aspect that we can't necessarily show on YouTube and that people don't really want to see. You know, and so um, um, it's nice to to be different in different platforms sometimes. And this is what we have established and that we are trying to do. You know, I do a recipe and it's going to be watched more times sometimes than some of my videos on YouTube. You know, and you think, OK, <laughs> so that's, you know, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes, unfortunately, I had 10 more questions, but I think we have just two minutes left. So. <laughs> Uh, we will leave them for the next time. Uh, now, maybe last question, and I will ask you to turn on your microphones all together. Mm, can you say that what you are doing is your dream profession? Yeah, of oh. course. <laughs> yes. Of course. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was hoping for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was alone on the first one. <laughs> Thank you that you were with us. Uh, dear visitors, I have just sent um, the link to all the channels of all content creators who joined us during the first ExpoLingua uh, three days. And tomorrow is one more day. We have two more um, uh, sessions with content creators. Uh, here, I will just a second, I will send you the link to the, to the program of ExpoLingua tomorrow, last day. Don't miss anything. It's all free of charge. So. We hope we can you can join us once again and 
everyone have a great evening or day, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so have a great time of the day you are having now. And see you uh, next time. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Grazie. Thanks, everyone. It was nice Thank meeting you. you. Adios. Adios. Bye. Ciao.